Well, big technology on tap this morning. Apple set to release their earnings tomorrow after the close. Uh, the company's second quarter report follows disappointing numbers from its fellow tech titans. Facebook last week wiping out all of its 2018 gains and posting the largest one-day loss in market value by any company in history. Following a disastrous quarterly report, Twitter also taking a hit from a decline in monthly users. That stock went plummeting. Let's bring in Jonathan Hoden, capitalist, pig.com founder. Oh, man, I tell you, it was a rough week for technology, Jonathan, last week. Yeah, all of it on brutal. earnings. Let's, I yeah, guess, have, move. I have not, <laughs> haven't seen anything like it. I know. I feel like we should just move on and talk about Apple and try to put last week behind us <laughs> with Facebook and Twitter. But let's talk about Apple's report. Um, do you think that's actually going to help the sector turn itself around? Let's hope so. Let's hope so, Cheryl, because as you pointed out, the bloodbath in the Nasdaq last week, almost like something we really haven't seen, certainly since the election. I mean, since the election, technology stocks like Apple have accounted for about half the market's total gain. So these big cap stocks, the, Netflix, the Netflixes, the Apples, the Tesla, also reporting earnings this week, these have been the drivers of the market. So, of course, investors are going to be listening very closely, not only about the prospect of a new phone, we've heard that, of course, hinted from Apple's conference calls, but also about the prospect of growth in their cloud business. You know, the iPhone still counts for 62% of Apple's sales, but that's almost the old news. The new news for Apple in terms of earnings is the cloud. But Cheryl, to your original point, given the damage in tech stocks last week, I think a lot of investors are just going to be hoping to get through this earnings season without any more major blow-ups like Tesla and like Twitter. Jonathan, hey, it's Adam Shapiro. I wanted to pick up on something you said about, you know, as they shift towards the cloud because we saw what Amazon did with their web services blew everyone away and Apple's making that kind of we think of them as uh, you know I always get confused but as a hardware company and yet their software and their cloud services you know the music offerings the TV offerings this is where they're they're trying to go isn't it yeah, it, you're absolutely right, Adam. And to, to, I think what has made Apple so successful, I mean, this is a company that's on the cusp of becoming a $1 trillion company for the first time. What's made them so successful, Adam, to your point, is their willingness to not only cannibalize their own products, but truly reinvent themselves. You know, majority of the profit now, the, the revenue comes from iPhone. This is a product that didn't even uh, exist 15 years ago. So. It, mm -hmm. Absolutely. The, and the cloud really is where the margins are. It is where the growth is. And that prospect of growth, Adam, I think that's what has investors very concerned because these, these big cap techs have been trading historically pretty expensive. These are not cheap stocks. Many of them are called unicorns, like Tesla, for example. So mm -hmm. once that growth becomes a little more murky, <laughs> the stocks can take a dive and take a dive big time like we saw last well, week. Well, they're going to have the conference call, obviously, an hour after the numbers come out at 5 p.m. Eastern time. I can't wait to hear what they say about China. Yeah. That's going to be what I'm really going to be listening for when they uh, report. Okay, I, I'm going to break a promise and go back to Facebook <laughs> because there was some late breaking news Friday night uh, that the company, the CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, are going to be sued by a Manhattan shareholder after that big stock drop of 19%. The, what's interesting about the lawsuit, though, Jonathan, is it says that Facebook misled the shareholders about business and the stock price fell once the truth was revealed. What do you make? I mean, look, shareholder lawsuits happen all the time, but, but the basis of this one, I think, is interesting. Yeah, well, especially it happened a lot of time with big, successful companies with a lot of money like Facebook. Don't see this in particular, Cheryl, having a major impact, but simply the confidence of shareholders themselves. Obviously, some who've lost money have, have lost some confidence, but more and more are going to continue to lose confidence. And, you know, essentially, if big cap tech can't power the market forward, what will? That's what investors should be most worried about. Not small lawsuits like this. This will come and go. But what's going to lead the economy? What's going to lead the market? If it's not going to be a big cap tech, we'll have a better idea a little later in the week after these earnings are released. Aaron's got a question for you. Hi, Jonathan. Good morning. So I know you're a hedge fund guy. Hedge funds had, <laughs> according to Goldman Sachs, more than 10 percent of hedge funds count Facebook as a top holding. Was this a big hit to those hedge funds or you think this is going to rebound pretty quickly? Well, no, I mean, listen, you, you, you can't follow the crowd, <laughs> whether you're an individual investor or whether a hedge fund or anyone else. You have to try to get ahead of the crowd. So uh, 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 to your point, so many investors, whether they're big time hedge funds or just everyday folks, have really bought in to this idea of the big cap tech stocks as being the market leaders, the market essentials. And, you know, we saw very much the same idea back in the late 1990s when people felt as if, you know, Cisco and Microsoft were the only stocks you needed to own. That was in the last big <laughs> tech uh, tech. Uh, 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 blow up back in the late 90s. Yeah. Oh, and pets. I think you can make the case. <laughs> yeah, about time. We're seeing, this, we're seeing the same type of attitude now. I think that's one reason. You know, Warren Buffett has a great line. He says, Be greedy when others are fearful, 
fearful yeah. when others are greedy. That's true. I'm bullish on the economy, but I see some greed right now. I think it's a good time for all caution. Right. Yeah, all right. Well, I do want to switch gears. There's this new uh, report out in the Wall Street Journal today. It's called No Experience Necessary. Basically, certain companies are saying, nah, we're not going to worry about your work history. College degree, yeah, don't worry about that either. They're lowering the bar because they need to hire people. They're desperate to get people into the company. I mean, is this actually beneficial <laughs> for companies, though, in the long term, if you get somebody that doesn't have the experience they need? What what a what a change, Cheryl. I mean, I remember <laughs> talking with you it, ten years ago. What this wasn't even that when you know people with advanced degrees were banging on doors, couldn't find work a, at all, and that was of course in the, in the midst of the Great Recession uh, following the the financial implosion. Times mm. have changed. It's indicative of a tremendous workforce. I think it's also indicative of the the fact that the job market has changed, Cheryl. I mean, what does Google care what school you went to? They want to know if you can program, if you can produce. <laughs> this is a positive thing looking forward. The fact that employers are now looking at skills and not just the hoi polloi name on the top of a degree. So it sounds like you're a little bit though pessimistic about the market based on the fact that you think that tech drives so much of growth. Um, are there any bright spots that you're looking at? Yeah, I mean, I think I think you have to be cautious again, just given what we saw last week. And I think now more than anything is a time, and it's not sexy, it's not exciting like stock tickers. But you know, we've heard time and time again how most investors or most Americans couldn't even come up with three to six months worth of living expenses, couldn't yeah. up with, come up with cash. So look, I agree with the vice president and, and her his terrific interview with Maria about how stellar the economy is. Knowing that, I think now is a good time to just get one's financial house in order, get three months, six months worth of cash, living expenses in the bank, then I think it's time to really get optimistic because you know even if the economy falls, you're protected mm -hmm. long term. You want to have that extra cash on hand because you never yep. know. <laughs> Jonathan, yep. you ever we've know. been through for decades. Jonathan, it's good to see you. Thank you for coming on. Thanks, Cheryl. Be right, well. Jonathan Honig, you too.